Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication and how to build strong family bonds all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about how to get kids to focus better. I know that lack of focus in children is a common problem. There are certain ages that are more apt to have focus issues than others, but there are also certain personalities and tendencies that might also lead into not being able to focus well. In this video, we're gonna be talking about that non-focus problem and what teaching self-government skills and principles you can use to help with focus. So lack of focus, what can that look like? I mean, at different ages, it can look like different things. And there are some ages where children will have a hard time focusing. When children hit about ages seven and eight, they get distracted very, very easily and have a hard time focusing in. When it used to seem like, oh, they could sit and read their little book forever or you know, build with their blocks or something and they could keep themselves totally self-entertained and now all of a sudden they can't. Well, some of that is just developmental that happens. So sometimes we have to wait a little bit of it out, but there are some things that we can do. What about children who are a little older and are struggling with focus issues? Well, did you know that puberty also can create an attention problem or a lack of focus problem? Well, it can. There's a ton of changes that are happening in the body and just sometimes all of those hormonal changes and feelings that a person goes through helps to throw them off course and decrease their ability to focus as well. But then there are other things such as when a person maybe easily gets distracted because of how they're wired. Maybe somebody you know, is a little neurodiverse and maybe they have ADHD or something like that and they can focus in on some things really like hyper focus in, but then they can't see anything else around them or they have a hard time focusing in on anything and they're getting very distracted. All of those things can definitely be things that you might be facing. I know they are frustrating, but it is super important. Rule number one when it comes to helping a person achieve focus is be patient. Don't expect that you can control their focus. That's going to lead to a power struggle and it will create a problem for you and for your child. So when you're helping someone develop focus, you actually want to be as proactive or preventative as possible instead of trying to focus everything on the reactive side. So what do I mean by proactive or preventative? Well, that means that you want to pre-teach the person ahead of time what is possible and what they should do to maintain their focus in certain circumstances and how you will help them get back on track. So what I'm talking about is some of the building blocks for self-government. So in this book, Parenting a House United, I talk about pre-teaching many things so long view things as well as short view things so pre-teaching there's three different types of pre-teaching there's instructive pre-teaching situational pre-teaching and then prepping that happens right in the minute really fast all those types of pre-teaching can help a person prepare to focus in the minute in fact pre-teaching is definitely the number one thing that you would want to teach a person that you are going to do to help them focus in. This will also help them be more receptive to any of the pre-teaching moments when they occur. But not only pre-teaching is useful, sometimes corrections and other feedback can help a person also maintain their focus. If you've already subscribed to this channel, then you know that in the teaching self-government method of parenting, that we focus heavily on this concept of vision and that the family prepares ahead of time for what type of family they want to create, what type of relationships they want to have, how they want them to feel. And there's a way to go about doing that where everyone can get buy-in. So that family vision is really helpful at maintaining focus in the moment for a person. If you have this gold standard, this bar that you're working toward as a group, then you can see yourself heading toward it every single day because you're never perfect yet. You don't quite all the way get there all the time. And so you have this evaluation standard or this point where you are aiming toward each day. That helps a person stay focused too. 
also having meetings. So I talk about having family meetings, couples meetings, individual mentor meetings, parent counseling sessions, which are another type of a meeting. Those types of meetings are also geared toward helping a person maintain focus in the future. So you focus in for a moment on the meeting and then focus for the future. Now I hear somebody saying, yeah, but there's no way that my child is going to maintain focus for a meeting. Well, you might be surprised. If you tell the child, this meeting is only going to take 20 minutes. We are going to time it because that's how long a good family meeting should take is 20 minutes or less. And if it takes any more, then you stop the meeting. You just don't go over the 20 minute mark because you told everyone it would take 20 minutes. So if you stick to time limits on things, that helps people learn to focus. Lots of times children who have parents who are constantly saying, when we get it done, when we get this done, when we get this done, and then there's always more details that keep getting added to it. Finally, they, they just check out because they feel like this is never gonna be over. And they just wanna know when the end is going to be so they can know how long to extend their focus time. They absolutely can maintain focus during meetings and other planning sessions if they know that that planning session has an end time. Another thing that you can do is you can practice focusing for small segments of time where you say to your child, let's do a challenge and see if we can sit still and just look at our book for one whole minute without moving. Then you can practice for two minutes and then you can practice for five minutes. You can see if you can extend that attention span time. Those are things that are very effective when children are young. In fact, even older children can benefit from them, although sometimes they might think that they're just a little bit babyish. But truthfully, is it babyish if you really can't sit still and focus for longer than one minute? Maybe not. Maybe it's a skill that even adults could work on. So what types of things could we teach ahead of time related to self-government that could help a person maintain their focus and attention span longer? In the Teaching Self-Government Parenting program, in the course that I have, there are four basic skills for success. These children's books each teach one of those four basic skills, which are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. So if you tell a person ahead of time, these are key moments when you need to focus in. When I tell you it's an instruction, then this is what you need to do. And there are five steps to following an instruction. Those five steps are to look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, do the task immediately, and then check back. If they know those are the five things, it's always the same every time, no matter the instructions, no matter the circumstance, they do those five things. Then when you say to your child, here is an instruction, I need you to take your dish to the sink. Then they know I can look at my hand and go, okay, I'm going to look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say, okay. And then I go do the task immediately and then come check back. Mom, I took my dish to the sink. Is there anything else? And then at that point, obviously you would praise them, right? To show them that they did such a good job. When you tell a child ahead of time when they need to use their focus, that helps them even more. Sometimes that's the key piece that's missing is they just don't know when they do need to focus. People might always be complaining about the fact that they don't focus in or talk to them about their focus, but they don't explain that there are key moments when focus is more helpful. So following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and then disagreeing appropriately, especially on disagreeing appropriately, because you have to seek to understand the other person's point of view in that skill. Now, all of those four basic skills have steps associated with them that can help the child focus in. All those four basic skills start with the same step. Every one of the four basic skills starts with look at the person. That right there is a deliberate focus thing. So if I look at the person or the situation, that means I'm focusing in. I am telling myself I am ready. I am looking for information, for data, so that I know what to do next. So looking at the person doesn't only maintain a nice connection and help build relationships because it does that, 
but it also helps a person learn how to maintain focus. I know some people have a hard time looking at the person. If you have a child whose focus issues are so extreme that they have a hard time looking at a person and actually maintaining their attention or focus, then you might want to have a kind of a touch point where maybe they put their hand on top of your hands or they touch you in some way to maintain a focus to what you are saying at the time. Another key thing that helps with focus is staying in that front brain. The prefrontal cortex does all of the logic, problem solving, and focusing for the person. So if you are emotional when you're talking to your child and they go to their emotional brain, they're going to have a hard time focusing in. So what you need to do is make sure you stay calm and deliberate and focused in your words. Use the skills that you've already taught them that you would use, not just the four basic skills, but also maybe the five teaching styles, such as correcting and pre-teaching and intensive teaching. All of those teaching styles are going to be skills that your children already know. And when you say, hey, I'm going to use this skill skill right now, then they can focus in on what you're doing as well. And that hopefully helps them become less emotional in a circumstance where they might want to give in to some of those emotional impulses. When you pre-teach a person and you tell them, this is what I need you to do. Now, here we have a circumstance that's upcoming and you need to do that thing. What you'll want to do is make sure that you get some feedback from them to make sure that they completely understand. So you might say, I'm giving you an instruction to go and take your laundry down to the washroom, okay? And so if they say, okay, and you say, all right, now repeat back to me exactly what you're gonna do when you take the laundry down there. And they go through the steps of taking the laundry down, or they say, I'm gonna go take the laundry down to the washroom, and then I'm gonna come back and check back with you. Either of those options would be okay, and it shows that they're listening and they know what to do next. Now another skill that's gonna be beneficial for maintaining focus is accepting a no answer. Because a person oftentimes, if they get distracted easily, have to give themselves a no answer. So that would mean you have to look at the situation, keep a calm face, voice, and body about it, and tell yourself no. You can't do that thing and then tell yourself, okay, I'm telling myself, okay, to my own no answer, that I'm dropping the subject about it. I'm not thinking about that distraction that is coming up. You might even have to pre-teach telling yourself anything else that comes along is a no. I have to stay focused. Another thing that can help with focus is timers. Some people work really well on a timer. If they know that it's a short amount of time, then they might be able to maintain focus longer. In fact, keeping things timed really does make a difference. With the skill following instructions, the very last step is to check back with the person. What I've recognized is that many people who have a hard time with follow through or staying focused on a task, usually don't think that they have to report to anybody afterward. If it's only them doing a task, then oftentimes they won't check back. Also, if they happen to be the type of person that is an upholder or an obliger, they're going to want somebody else to hold them accountable sometimes. And if you've seen my tendency videos, you'll know what those things are. So those types of people need to get to that check back. Otherwise they'll start feeling like there's no point in following through. So teaching a person to get to the check back can make a big difference. You want to keep it simple. When a person has a hard time focusing, it's because life is already too stimulating, too distracting, or they have too many things on their mind. So keep things simple. When you're wanting someone to focus in, focus on a skill they already know, steps they already know. Even if the task is a new task, it's still just following instructions and they already know those five steps. So no need to make it more complicated than that by overloading the details when you give the instruction. And if you feel like more details are required, then give them a checkoff list. Checkoff lists are really helpful for helping somebody be able to follow through so that they can say, okay, cleaning the bathroom includes this, 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 and then they can just go through the list and get to the check back. You may want to put on your checkoff list, check back at the end. If they're successful at checking back lots of times, then they'll know they can hold themselves to a task that they can focus in. This will actually increase their focus. Probably one of the biggest things about focus is it actually takes practice to focus. Some people expect that if you tell someone to focus, they should be able to just instantly do it. But that's not how the brain learns and works. So what you need to be is patient. When a person is learning to focus in, they're going to make mistakes a lot. Just help bring them back on course 
by doing a correction. Sometimes corrections are just the things that are needed to help a person learn to focus in the next time. If they don't follow the instruction the first time, they do a correction and get the opportunity to earn an extra chore as part of that corrective interaction, then usually what happens is the next time they go, I don't wanna have that happen again, so I'm gonna stay focused. And the pre-teaching can set this up for you too. The more things that you pre-teach, the less things that you need to correct. If this has been interesting to you, there is so much more on this channel. Definitely subscribe, but you may wanna also go to one of the full length classes that I have all about disagreeing appropriately. It's called the full length class on disagreeing appropriately. That is a skill that requires focus, but also teaches focus at the same time. Click on the link to that video now. I'll see you there.